Hi, this is Dr. Bosch, and I wanted to take you one step further from our discussion of how muscles contract. I've had a number of email questions over the same topic, so I thought this might be helpful. So if you remember the last time I sent you a video, it was of this process by which muscles contract, where the calcium gets released, it attaches to troponin, that stops the blocking action of tropomyosin, and the muscle can contract. Now, before we leave this page again, note what a key role calcium has on causing muscle contraction. So having calcium ions in the presence of the muscle fibers will cause those muscle fibers to contract. So one effect of that calcium is this idea of being able to recruit more motor units when a stimulation is used more than once. So for example, I'm looking at slide 46 on chapter 9 PowerPoint. And if a muscle is stimulated right away after it's been stimulated already, all the calcium hasn't gone away. So you're actually adding more calcium to that muscle fiber. And with the same stimulation, not a greater stimulation, the same stimulation, you can increase the strength of that muscle. And if you do it again, you can increase it even more. Now there's a limit to this. It doesn't go on forever. But what this basically shows is that if you use muscles again and again, they will work better, they will be stronger, they will have greater tension. It's called wave summation when the next stimulation comes before the contraction is over. So even as the muscle's contracting and beginning to relax, you give it another stimulation. This is called wave summation. A very similar phenomena is called trepa. That means uh, stairs in German. The only difference here is that after the stimulation of a muscle, you let it relax, but right away, you can't wait, right away stimulate it again, and you'll get a greater tension. The muscle will work better. And then you do it again, and up it goes. So these are the steps that the German um, described so that when the muscle is functioning, continued stimulation gives you a much higher tension. In other words, the strength of the muscle is much stronger than the exact same stimulation when you started out. You'll notice that for both wave summation and TREPA, it has everything to do with the calcium. If the cal it takes a while to put the calcium back in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, so by having another stimulation right away, there's still calcium out there and you get a much stronger reaction. Okay, so this is why we warm up in sports and why once you're out on the field playing soccer or football or anything else, you do much better than just jumping off the bench and running out there. You have to be warmed up because then you have the calcium available. Now, we turn to slide 37 for just a minute before I help you with the lab that's actually due today. I've had a number of questions on it, so I'm going to try to answer it with this video. Um, if you look at this process, this takes time. So a nerve has to come down the axon. It has to cause the vesicles to release ACH. The ACH has to go across the synapse. It has to cause an action potential on the muscle. That action potential has to move down the muscle um, fiber, the, the outside of the muscle fiber, the sarcolemma or cell membrane, down the T-tubule, has to stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium. The calcium has to go over to the actual um, actin molecules and attach to troponin, which moves the tropomyosin which allows the myosin heads to um, contact the actin and move them. Now that took me a long time to say, 
In reality, it rarely takes more than maybe two one thousandths of a second to go from the nerve stimulation to here. But the fact is there is a little bit of a time lag, a very small time lag that we can discover when we uh, work with muscles in the lab. So let's go over to the lab. Now, most of you found this just fine, but I'll just take the time to do this. When you are in the modified mastering area and you, and you hit launch study area, one of your choices, of course, is the PAL lab that we've used a lot, and you're going to use it even more in the labs that come up. But this one's called Physio EX. So if you click on Physio EX, you'll see there are exercises that come up. You click on that, and we're working on exercise two, number one. So you can click on number one, and there will be some questions to answer. And whether you get them right or wrong, it does let you eventually go to the actual lab. And there are directions at the top here. You know, start with a uh, stimulator set on zero, zero volts, and then you'll be moving up one by one. So um, if you stimulate it without any electricity, now, now the electricity is acting like a nerve. I think there's actually a question in your lab about that. What's this like in the body? We don't have our muscles hooked up to electricity. We have them hooked up to our nerves. So that would be a, an axon right there. But when you stimulate it with zero, nothing happens. See the yellow line just going straight across. And you can record that just as a zero, um, but you then want to want to move up. So if you stimulate it, say with one volt, you're going to have some of these muscle fibers um, fire, but not all of them. In other words, there's there's thousands, really tens of thousands of muscle fibers, and with a very low voltage, you'll get some of them to fire. Perhaps let's see. Let's go ahead and and uh, stimulate it. Yeah, so the blue line shows that there was just a little bit of um, stimulate uh, of uh, tension there after you stimulate it. Now, the part that people are missing is to get this going. Remember how I said it takes a little time? You have to have the muscle be stimulated. You have to have it go into deeper areas of the muscle fibers. And then you have to have the calcium be released. The calcium has to attach the troponin. That has to move tropomyosin. The way to figure out how long that takes is to see how long it is between the stimulation of the muscle and the rise in the um, tension. You do that by hitting measure. And then you just hit this button here. And if you look up on the graph, you see the little line coming over like that, this line right here. We're going to move it to a point where it starts to go up because nothing's happening when it's flat like that. So it looks like about at about 3.2, it begins to rise. So that's 3.2 out of 1,000. These are milliseconds. Now, once you have that, you can record your data, and that will give you your latent period. I noticed on some of the labs that were turned in, these were all zeros. I think you missed this step of measuring. Now, if I go on and try two volts, that should cause more muscle fibers to fire. Now, each muscle fiber will fi um, fire and cause the same amount of tension. But if you have more and more muscle fibers um, contracting, then, of course, this tension is going to go up, just like you can use your muscles to pick up a feather and you can use your muscles to pick up 20 pounds. You know, it's going to be different amount of muscle fibers firing. So let's just try two real quick. And you can see that really begins to get some of those muscle fibers going. Now, one thing you should find is that when you look for the latent period here, that's not going to be too different. It might be off by a little bit. Like I'd say it's more of a 2.8 to get going. So maybe, you know, somewhere around three milliseconds. But again, if you go down here and put record data, you'll have that down. And you can try them for the other ones. We're going to keep adding voltage, and you're going to uh, stimulate more and more of these muscle fibers. Another thing I wanted to show you briefly is that if you go online and look 
for videos related to muscle contraction, like here I've looked for troponin and tropomyosin and muscle contraction, you'll find some very good explanations if you're not quite sure. Some are short, some are longer, um, but this will give you a much better idea about how muscles contract. The last thing I want to mention today is that if you go to your modules to chapter nine, there's the non-narrated PowerPoint as usual, then the muscle contraction diagram that is in your PowerPoint. And then this video, which is quite good, it doesn't really tell you what's going on with the troponin, tropomyosin, but it's a really good video for just showing how muscles are um, stimulated and how we get a contraction. And that's from Pearson, so it should work. These are really good videos, but they use Shockwave Player, Shockwave, or uh, Adobe um, Flash, and they, it's not available anymore. I know I have it at school, I have it on my office computer and um, classroom computer, but I can't get it to go on my home computer. So, you know, I mean, if you find a way to play these with a newer system, please let me know and I'll share that with the class. Um, so these SWFs are great, but you may not be able to see them. Um, but this uh, video you will be able to see because it's part of Pearson. Okay, hope that was helpful and I wish you luck on learning the muscles. And uh, of course, always contact me if you have any questions.